you everyone uh, for joining us today. My name is Monica Santisteo and I am assistant professor at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And uh, today I am joined by Dr. Constantino Yaracola, who is the director of the Brain and Mind Research Institute at Weill Cornell Medicine. He gave a plenary uh, session today uh, focusing on brain health, the impact of hypertension on brain health from vascular cognitive impairment to Alzheimer's disease. So thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, so can we start out by giving us a brief overview of what your lecture focused on? Sure. So we started with um, outlining the history of dementia through the, over the past 100 years or so. And, we, you know, highlighting the concept that at the very beginning, you know, when uh, Ms. Dr. Alzheimer was, was uh, active, the major cause of dementia was due to vascular failure of the brain, and he called it hardening of the arteries. And then, you know, as we discovered the, the, um, the, the, the syndrome that then who, to which he gave his name, the Alzheimer's disease, which is uh, characterized by the position of amyloid beta and uh, a hyperphosphorylated um, form of the um, microtubule filament uh, associated protein tau, um, the, um, the idea that um, uh, vascular dementia was really important in the, in the senile dementia, dementia of the aged, became less and less uh, um, uh, appreciated. And the culminating in the 1980s, when the Alzheimer started to be called the major cause of dementia in the elderly. So at that time, the, nobody really was paying much attention to the role of vascular factors. And uh, the uh, somewhat artificial construct was, was made that uh, uh, there were vascular diseases of the brain causing dementia and there were neurodegenerative diseases of the brain causing dementia. And neurodegenerative diseases being Alzheimer's disease predominantly. Right. And um, so this construct has been kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, one by one is being disassembled by a series of, of clinical and basic science evidence suggesting that uh, uh, alteration of the blood vessels play also a role in Alzheimer's disease, in what's called a clinically Alzheimer's disease. And this evidence comes from uh, different uh, fields of science, so epidemiology, um, clinical pathological correlations in patients, as well as you know imaging studies that, that have shown that uh, the uh, uh, vascular factors really are a component of most cases of, of dementia with the elderly. Right. And a recent study, a uh, proteomic study, suggested that um, uh, the hardening of the arteries are, are very, very important. So, so we we'll like back to the future. It's full uh, circle. Uh, full circle. And now we're, we're looking. So hardening of the arteries in this particular study meant atherosclerosis of the intracranial arteries, which mm -hmm. is a fancy way that to say hardening of the arteries and and uh, that's been now linked to alzheimer's disease independently of a beta uh, like on, on his own right uh, this this hardening uh, with atherosclerosis you know and i think uh, hypertension being one of the major risk factors you know uh, damaging the blood vessels you know falls exactly into the this interaction interactive um, um, that there is between the vascular and neurodegenerative dementia so uh, I felt that this was really very important for the hypertension community to, to realize how important the, this, uh, what they're studying is for, for brain health, right. because it captures both aspects of, the, of this uh, um, continuum between vascular and neurodegenerative dimensions. Yeah, and there's, there's a, a large focus on hypertension because midlife hypertension is associated with this late life dementia. Yeah. And it's somewhat um, controversial whether lowering blood pressure can actually yeah. protect cognition. Um, so what is the interaction between hypertension and Alzheimer's disease? And, and how do we think about the effects of hypertension when it comes to Alzheimer's disease immunotherapy? Yes. So uh, con concerning Alzheimer's disease, you know, as you pointed out, there is a very strong link between hypertension in midlife, which means 40 to 50 years old, to uh, to Alzheimer's disease in the eight, 70 to 80, right? So, and that has been a very hard, very problem, very big problem because, you know, it's hard to follow patients for that long period of time. Right. But nevertheless, some studies have shown, you know, uh, long-term, you know, studies have shown that uh, that's really the case. So treatment of, of, of midlife hypertension is, is not just good for the heart, not good for the kidney, but it's also very good for the stroke. 
for, for brain. And not only in reducing stroke incidence, which has been one of the major successes of hypertension control, although we know that you know, it's uncontrolled in 30 million Americans, mm -hmm. but whatever we're doing is reducing stroke risk you know, by 40 millimeter, forty percent per 10 millimeter of mercury of reduction mm -hmm. in blood pressure. So um, perhaps we can do even better than that. But if you look at the corrispective impact on, on cognitive functions, you know, there is a literature is all over the place and there's a, a clear message did not emerge, although there are hints that controlling the blood pressure. So this raises the question whether lowering the pressure is the only thing we can do. Yeah. Maybe we should do something else, and maybe the, the, the data that is emerging on the role of neuroimmune factors uh, in, in, the, in the cognitive impact of hypertension should be taken more seriously. And, and, and moving into the beta immunotherapy, I think the, the neuroimmune aspect of hypertension with respect to brain uh, dysfunction is really very fitting because a better immunotherapy is, is a recently introduced treatment for Alzheimer's disease, very early Alzheimer's disease, that is able to slow down the decline that occurs over one to two years. But the a, a number of patients, about 30 to 40 percent in some cases, uh, experience a complication which is called uh, ARIA which is a, a amyloid-related imaging abnormality, which is reflected, is diagnosed by MRI, by resonance, um, magnetic resonance imaging, showing edema and microhemorrhages, and is reflected in symptoms for the patients, in, a, in, a, in a se several patients, uh, you know, like uh, visual disturbances, um, um, uh, gait disturbances, headache most commonly. And in some cases, people have had seizures and they have died out of the um, of this area syndrome. So the, the, the therapy, the immunotherapy has got a dark side, which is ARIA. Yeah. And hypertension is one of the risk factors for ARIA. Yeah. So I think this one drives home the fact that in the neuroimmune dysfunction that hypertension uses in the brain, coupled with the neuroimmune dysfunction produced by, by amyloid beta, as it kind of leaves the brain uh, during the treatment, Know, leads to this complication. So it, it is important to, uh, to really take, play, take, take care of the vascular risk factors, you know, also in the context of a bad immunotherapy. Right. So the vessels are back. Yeah. Right? And they're here to stay. The focus is back <laughs> yeah. on the vessels. Yeah. Um, and as we like to say, heart health is brain health. Absolutely. And, yeah. um, and so just to sum up, so where do you see the research going? What would be the most important findings to yeah. to uncover in the next five to ten years. Yeah, so I, I think uh, the, it's got to be a multi-pronged approach. I think tre hypertension and, and brain damage it remains a major focus because still people have strokes. Right. <laughs> a stroke is the second uh, most common cause of, of death in the world. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's the sixth in the United States because it used to be the fifth, but then with the, the pandemic, mm -hmm. it went down to six. But nevertheless, it's a major, particularly in, in the stroke belt, so-called, you know, it's a major, major concern. So we need to, yeah, hypertension is the major factor treatable yeah. for, for that. So we need to take care of that, which is going to help with the strokes, it's going to help with the dementia. Because as we said, there is a, a midlife. So any approach that, it, that you can put in to, to really limit the impact of hypertension on the brain is going to be good for, for everything. Not just for the heart or the kidney, but particularly for, for, for the brain. And then at the, at the, for the level of, at the level of a better immunotherapy, which is going to explode in this country. It's yeah. been, there are three um, uh, you know, FDA-approved drugs. Uh, there are 6 million people with Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in the United States. Um, if you think that about 10% of those will be eligible, as some estimates say, you're still going to have about a million people right. seeking this treatment. So it's going to be a tremendous impact on that. And so we got to understand how hypertension interferes with, with the, the immunotherapy. Most of the data is locked up in the, in the drug companies' files. Um, and the Alzheimer's Association, as well as the FDA, they are trying now to, uh, to have the, the, the drug companies agree to merge all their data on ARIA, independently of the source of the treatment or, whatever, or, the, or the name of the drug, you know, to try to understand more, more exactly. You know, what are, so that's another approach. And then mm -hmm. obviously it's the basic science. So the in, in neuroimmunology of hypertension is, is gaining tremendous you know, uh, successes. In terms of you know mechanistically explaining, it hasn't panned out yet. Um, so we need that last final step, 
which is always the most difficult one, you know, to translate the, the, all the wealth of information is accumulating into a treaty. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, and thank you for a wonderful talk today. Okay.